Hello and welcome to another Friday here at Core Cutting Today. It is July 10th, 2020, and as always, we're going to be taking a look at the week that was in the world of cord cutting and streaming. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about some new Roku updates, including one that's since been pulled back. We'll also discuss some Sling TV news, more live TV integration on Amazon's Fire TV line, and more. And as always, for all the stories we're about to talk about here on Cord Cutting Today, we have links to those associated posts so you can find out more via our news website, cordcuttersnews.com. And lastly, please do consider clicking those like and or subscribe buttons down below. Those are both great ways to support this channel and they enable us to keep bringing you more news as well as other types of video content in the future, like our recent looks at streaming services like YouTube TV and Hulu. With all that being said though, it's high time we got to the news, and we start with Roku. Okay, Roku unveiled a pair of significant updates this week, and one of them is still going as of the recording of this episode. First up, if you're a subscriber to premium content through the Roku channel, you'll now be able to see that content directly on the guide feature. Now those premium subscriptions include the likes of HBO, Cinemax, Showtime, Stars, and Epics, and you should see those options in the Roku channel guide starting this week. The other notable update was actually rolled back later in the week, and it had to do with Roku TV users accessing live TV over the air via an antenna. Now the update was supposed to integrate those OTA channels in with the Roku channels over the top options all in one place. However, while some users liked having all their free content commingling, others have reported that the combined guide results in a cluttered, sluggish experience. Uh, on top of that, there was no way to turn the feature off so that the guide would only feature OTA channels from an antenna. Well, Roku has responded and opted to roll the update back. In a reply to a message board post, a Roku employee says the feature has since been removed. Now, Roku TV users will only see OTA channels when they click on the live TV tile of their home screen. And if you want to see streaming content in the live TV guide, you can head to the live TV channel guide within the Roku channel. Now, it's highly likely the integrated option will make a comeback in the near future, only with the option to turn it on and off, uh, depending on the user's preference, and we'll certainly let you know if and when that feature returns. In other streaming news, Comcast announced that Sling TV is now available on its Xfinity Flex devices, and that includes all of Sling TV's packages. To recap, the Flex is Comcast's take on a set-top streaming box, a way to entice the company's internet-only customers to stay within Comcast's ecosystem. And Sling TV's pay TV service now joins options like HBO Max, Amazon Prime, Netflix, and more on Comcast's streaming box. And if you're one of those internet-only Comcast customers and you've given the uh, Flex a try, let us know what you think in the comments below. Meanwhile, Sling TV and Dish also announced they'll keep Viacom CBS channels on their lineups moving forward. The two sides agreed on a multi-year renewal of their carriage agreement, and that means channels like BET, CMT, Comedy Central, MTV, and more will continue to be part of both Sling TV's and Dish's platform. The original carriage agreement was made back in 2016 and was set to expire in a few weeks if no new agreement could be met. And while we didn't see specific uh, terms of that deal when it was announced earlier this week, it does mean that some big name channels will continue on without disruption. Over in the Amazon world, we have a couple significant additions to discuss. First up, the company announced it's beefing up the live TV experience on its Fire TV platform by more deeply integrating live TV streaming services. Those services include Hulu plus Live TV, YouTube TV, and Sling TV, and they'll be joining apps like Philo and Pluto TV on the platform. The different live TV services are being integrated at different times. Sling TV's edition actually began rolling out earlier this year, while YouTube TV's integration starts this week. Hulu Plus Live TV gets the same treatment in the coming weeks. As for what this type of integration means for users, live content from each of the streaming services will be added to Fire TV's discovery features, so you'll be able to access content from those options via, say, the Live tab, the Channel Guide, and more. And if you're a Fire TV user and you've had a chance to check these new features out so far, let us know what you think in the comments section down below. 
And as for Amazon's other announcement this week, the company has added multiple profile support to its Prime Video streaming service. This has been a long time request for Prime Video users, as we've seen multiple profiles available on services like Netflix and Hulu for some time now. Amazon actually added viewer profiles to Prime Video back in March, but this week's announcement brings the feature to users within the US. And the new feature also includes the option to create kids' profiles, which only shows content with ratings for those 12 and younger, and that includes search results and recommendations. For now, the new feature will be available on Android and iOS versions of the Prime Video app and on the web. You'll also find the new feature on 10th generation or newer Fire tablets and select devices like the PlayStation 4. Moving on, if the recent price hikes to YouTube TV and Fubo TV have you curious about other live TV alternatives, our very own Jess spent some time this week analyzing four cheaper options. You can find the full details in the post link down below in the video description, but highlights include Sling TV, Philo, Vidgo, and Hulu, plus live TV. And if you found yourself searching around for alternatives, we'd love to hear from you. Feel free to comment down below about any streaming service you've been thinking about switching to in the future. And we also have some hardware news this week. Over-the-air DVR company Tableau has announced a pair of new entries in its DVR lineup, while earlier models required users to provide their own storage, such as an external USB hard drive. These new models boast onboard storage. The uh, Tableau Dual 128GB DVR features two over-the-air tuners and, yes, 128GB of onboard storage. And the Quad 1TB model has four tuners and wait for it, one terabyte of built-in storage, which the company estimates is about 700 hours of HD content. And yes, even with the built-in hard drives, you can still tack on additional storage via USB like their earlier models. The dual 128GB retails for $169.99, while the quad 1TB comes in at $239.99. Moving on, it looks like Disney Plus has a big streaming hit on its hands with the film version of the Broadway musical Hamilton. However, despite the film's success, it might not be eligible for any Academy Awards, even though the Oscars have opted to uh, bend some eligibility rules this year. It appears the version of Hamilton that's now available on Disney Plus uh, might fall under the Academy's exclusion rules for works that are essentially an unfiltered record of uh, performances. In other words, unlike musicals that were adapted for film versions like, say, Chicago, the uh, streaming release of Hamilton might be a bit too close to the original Broadway production for consideration as a film. Still, it looks like Disney's going to try and submit the film anyway and see what happens. And you know, why not? As we mentioned, the Academy has opted to bend some of its rules this year to allow films that didn't have theatrical runs due to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, so we'll see if they're willing to make more exceptions in this case. In the meantime, if you've checked out Hamilton on Disney Plus this week, let us know what you thought of the film version in the comments below. In other content news, Pluto TV announced it will be adding some 40 CBS and Comedy Central shows to its free streaming service over the course of the summer. The uh, lineup includes some well-known shows like Survivor, Star Trek The Next Generation, America's Next Top Model, and Beverly Hills 90210. The service will also debut select episodes from seasons 1 through 10 of Comedy Central South Park. The new content should start appearing on Pluto TV beginning on July 14th, and more shows should follow as we roll through the summer months. And lastly, we have a bit of sponsored content. And like I mentioned last week, even with sponsored content, all opinions remain our own. So with that being established... This week, Shudder, a streaming service that caters to horror, thriller, and suspense fans, is premiering a new movie called The Beach House. You can catch the trailer in the post linked down below in the video description, but the uh, thriller focuses, as you can imagine, on a family beach house. But things get pretty strange soon enough. And you can check the new movie out, like we said, on Shudder, and new members can get 30 days for free with the promo code SHUTIN when they sign up. 
And that about wraps up another busy week here at Cord Cutting Today. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you like what we're doing here and want to keep supporting the channel, you're more than welcome to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. And like we said before, be on the lookout for more video content in the future. Lately, we've been publishing updates on some of the biggest streaming services out there, including Hulu and YouTube TV. And next week, we'll be taking a look at a brand new streaming service, Peacock. Until then, however, don't forget to check out our news website, cordcuttersnews.com, for all the latest cord cutting and streaming news. For now, though, I'm Philip Palermo. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Take care.